So let's a few moments now and simply uh, let go of everything that's come before. No matter what's boiling in our minds and our hearts, we're not pushing anything away. We're putting out the welcome mat for what's ever here. But we're going to actually uh, learn to drop in on a dimension of our lives that's always here and that we very often just simply don't uh, acclimatize to or befriend or pay enough attention to. And that is our capacity to just be with whatever arises in awareness and hold it in awareness without pushing it away, without pursuing it, without getting so caught up in it, whether it's a highly turbulent thought stream, emotional storms that occult that accompany the thought stream or anything else that arises in our experience. So let's see if we can simply um, tune into the fact that we're sitting here, seeing if we can sit or lie or whatever position you're in, in a posture that embodies wakefulness, intentionality, deep interconnectedness and, uh, and awareness. And uh, bring our awareness to the fact that amazingly enough, without our having to do anything about it at the moment, unless you are in a florid case of uh, COVID-19, uh, we are breathing. And that the breath is taking care of itself. We are not on a respirator right now, although many, many people are and have to be in order to get through this and, and, and uh, continue to live. So something that we so much take for granted, namely the fact that we're being breathed, so to speak, where the breath is taking care of itself. Uh, we, can, we can bring into our awareness and we can simply ride on the waves of our own in-breath and out-breath and all of the sensations associated with it in the body moment by moment by moment as we sit here. Everything else that's going on, all the stress, all the fear, all the pain, all the loss is equally present, but we're just inviting our awareness of the breath sensations in the body as we sit here to take center stage in the field of awareness and everything else for now, not pushing anything away, but also not pursuing it and it's simply letting it be in the wings for now. And so this is in some sense, a new place to take refuge, a new place to reside. that's always been here and that we can avail ourselves of whether we've been meditating for years and decades or whether we're brand new to the practice, this cultivation. It's not about getting someplace else or having some special feeling. It's about being exactly where you are, as you are, and simply embracing it in this new old dimension of awareness, the capacity we've had all along which requires a certain kind of cultivation to learn how to uh, inhabit our own awareness. And so simply riding on the waves of this breath coming in and riding on the waves of this breath leaving the body Eyes open is fine if you want to gaze at the screen or gaze beyond the screen. Eyes closed is also fine. Whatever you feel most comfortable with. And just taking up residency here with the full duration of this breath coming in. Feeling it. Experiencing the pause and the reversal full duration of this, this breath leaving the body, feeling it, and the pause at the nadir, and then the new in-breath coming all on its own, a new beginning, life renewing itself. 
And we don't have to work to make this happen. So not pushing the breath, not pulling the breath, but simply feeling the breath, befriending the universe of sensations in the body associated with this miraculous capacity that is so much at risk for so many when they get a very serious case of this virus. And so in that sense, sitting as if your life depended on this moment and this breath, which of course it does in more ways than we think and in more ways than we usually can think. And cultivating, if you can, a certain amount of just ease because the breath is simply doing itself. So you have nothing to do other than to ride on the wave with full awareness. Moment by moment by moment. And breath by breath by breath as we sit here, lie here, whatever. So seeing if uh, right in this moment, there isn't a certain quality of refuge of actually uh, being out of the storm, out of the ferocity of the winds and the turbulence of what we're experiencing. And for just this timeless moment, with just this in-breath or this out-breath and an awareness of the body sitting here breathing, there's not a sense of uh, calm, of relative calm. Of remembering and realizing that for now you're 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 okay. You're whole. Whatever you have to be dealing with in this particular. Uh, time in your own life and circumstances can you recognize the this quality of wholeness of completeness of being fundamentally okay right in this moment
And again, letting everything else, the challenges, whatever they are, and there are they are huge and they are there are many, simply for now be in the wings. And so there's just this breath. This moment. This body sitting here in relative stillness and the dignity of having made the choice to attend in this way. And whether you've been meditating for a hundred years or you're brand new to the practice, uh, it turns out that the, the mind, even when uh, it's not stressed, the way all our minds are stressed nowadays, the mind definitely has a life of its own. And just because you've asked it to ride or surf on the waves of sensation of the breath, doesn't mean that it's going to stay put. It is very label and it will go here and there, visiting the past and the future and just get carried away in the thought stream and an emotional reactivity. And that is important to remember that that is part of the curriculum. It's not like you're a bad meditator or you're doing something wrong. This is just the human mind. And it's not like what we're really concerned with is the breath. Important as the breath is, what we're really cultivating is our our capacity for awareness itself. So it's the attending that's important, not the objects of attention, like the breath sensations. So every time you notice that your mind is off someplace else and you've forgotten about the breath in your body, that's a moment of mindfulness too, because you've realized that um, you're thinking or you're caught up in emotion or whatever it is, that awareness is the same awareness as the awareness of the breath sensations you were just with the moment before. So it doesn't even mean that you have to come back to the breath because it's the awareness that's most important. So, but if you're brand new to this practice, it's very, very helpful to actually notice what's on your mind when it's no longer when the breath sensations are no longer so predominant or at all in evidence, just noticing what's on your mind and the emotional charge and how it feels in your body right in this moment as contraction, as anger, as tension, as fear. And then simply letting it be here and coming back to the breath sensations because your body's still breathing no matter how frightened or contracted the mind gets, the body's still breathing and we can actually retune to it without pushing away our fear, our anxiety, our concerns, our interest in the future and in the past. And for now, only for now, we come back, we recognize what's on our minds and we simply let it be and come back to the breath as a fundamental part of our somatic experience. And, and if the mind wanders 100,000 times in a few minutes, well, that's part of the curriculum too. That's just the nature of the mind to wave, just like it's in the nature of the ocean to wave depending on atmospheric conditions and storms. And so the mind can be very turbulent at the surface, but just like the ocean, you drop down 20 or 30 feet. And even in a tempest or a hurricane, there's simply gentle undulations. And so it is that refuge that we can not pursue, but actually drop in on because it's always here for us. And it doesn't deny the turbulence doesn't deny or push away anything at all. And so over and over and over again, as a kind of love affair, 
with what might be possible, we encourage ourselves to come back to the primary object that we've selected for ourselves. In this case, it happens to be the sense of the body as a whole sitting and breathing, but it could be anything. And over and over again, we recognize what is on our minds when it's caught up in something else and we've forgotten about the breath. And we come back lovingly, but at the same time, firmly. We're undergoing a certain kind of uh, training of the mind, exercising, if you will, the muscle of mindfulness. The more we work with whatever turbulence and resistance or impatience or whatever it is, boredom that arises, those are all just waves on the surface of the ocean of the mind. None of it's a problem because we can simply drop back into awareness and rest in a certain kind of stability, clarity, calmness, spaciousness of mind and heart that allows us to deal with whatever we're facing in imaginative, creative, and wholesome new ways. Moment by moment by moment. When we invite, if you will, the entirety of the day to become our meditation practice. But for now, just this moment, just this breath. Over and over, each in-breath is a new beginning and a gift because we know why. We're not taking any in-breath for granted anymore. And so we really can shelter in place by being fully embodied because this is the place we occupy. We can take shelter from the storm or refuge from the outer storms and also sometimes the most damaging are the inner storms, our reactions when we have a sense of losing control or falling into fear of what might be or grief and sadness and anger around what is. All of which is perfectly natural, but none of which is all that helpful in this particular moment. <clears throat> We're training ourselves, so to speak, to not lose our minds when we most need them, to not lose our hearts when we most need them and our loved ones and everybody on the planet most needs us to be our best selves. And this really is a love affair with sanity. And with the full dimensionality of what it really means to be you, to be human. When your deepest nature, what people love in you the most, radiates out and illuminates your domain and the domain of the world. And it's all happening right here and right now and in every moment of your life, meditating, not meditating, as long as you're willing to be awake and aware, just like this, just this moment, just this breath, 
just this sitting here, just this being human. Just this. Just this. Now, shortly, I'll, I'll ring some bells to signal the formal end, if you will, of the meditation practice. And, and I'll have a lot more to say about what that means and what it doesn't mean in a few moments. But for now, seeing if you can expand the field of your awareness around the body and around your breath to include the entirety of your experience as a human being, your thoughts, your emotions, uh, sounds aside from or underneath my voice, uh, sights if your eyes are open, uh, the full repertoire of your senses wide open and resting in an awareness that really is boundless and it doesn't end at the envelope of your skin. And in particular, since we're all on a line together, Seeing if you can feel like you're uh, whole in and of yourself at this particular moment, and also part of much wider circle of wholeness of human beings who have tuned in today to this uh, period of being together with the intention to cultivate mindfulness and to listen very deeply to each other. And I don't even have a number of how many people are tuning in right at this moment, but I know it's over a thousand because that's when everybody migrates to YouTube. But seeing if you can actually, if your eyes are open and seeing thumbnails of people on the screen or just with your heart open feeling how, uh, while we're whole in and of ourselves and part of our, the wholeness of our families and networks of friends, we're also part of a much larger web of interconnectedness and wholes, extending out to include all human beings on the planet. All of us capable of enormous suffering. Many people at the moment experiencing enormous suffering
And Nola was also capable of uh, enormous wakefulness, enormous compassion, enormous uh, wisdom. When we uh, align with what's deepest and best in ourselves. That perhaps we forget when we get too frightened or we get too busy or we get too whatever it is and, and simply forget that we're far, far bigger than our fear and our uh, small narratives about who we are, no matter how self-inflationary they are, or no matter how derogatory or, or sort of uh, um, damaging they might be when we don't recognize our own beauty and our own wholeness. And for now, just letting go of that and experiencing your wholeness and your beauty right in this moment. We like to say to people coming into an MBSR uh, program that, uh, and those people for the past 40 years have been coming with every conceivable medical diagnosis and chronic problem, medical problem, with stress, pain, and illness under the sun. And we say to them that as long as you're breathing from our perspective, there's more right with you than wrong with you, no matter what's wrong with you. And we're going to pour energy into what's right with you in the form of attention and awareness and compassion and open-hearted acknowledgement and let the rest of the healthcare system take care of what's wrong. We're talking about chronic disease now, not acute infection and see what happens. And what has happened over the past 40 years is that hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people have found that they can play a major role in their own health and well-being going forward over the lifespan. And this is a great adventure. So meditation is not one more thing you have to do and takes time in your busy day. The real meditation is how you live your life, how we live our lives from moment to moment. So if mindfulness is only, you know, effective on the meditation cushion, forget about it. That's really like tuning the instrument so that you can contribute to the orchestra of all of us contributing to this one world we inhabit. So as you hear the sound of the bells, I'd like to invite you to slowly uh, open your eyes if they've been closed and to expand your awareness so that there is in fact a sense of us all being here together <clears throat> and that the real meditation practice is life itself. So although I rang bells, it doesn't really mean anything because there's no end to this meditation practice. And when we approach it with that kind of intentionality and uh, resolve, then uh, everything that arises becomes part of the curriculum, including what's going on in your household, <clears throat> what's going on in your mind about um, all of the commitments you had to cancel, what's going on in your mind about your bank account and paychecks or home or family far away that you're not uh, able to be with physically. 
and everything else that arises in our very, very different lives. So in a sense, this is a certain kind of celebration of our differences, celebration of our unique uh, similarities, and also a recognition of how privileged we are to be able to, in this kind of a crisis moment, even take some time like this to get together in this way and uh, play, explore, adventure, connect. And of course, this is happening all over the internet. The orchestras are rehearsing together and opening up the rehearsals and uh, rap groups are putting stuff out and every conceivable <clears throat> form of music and art and everything, people are pouring out onto the internet. But why? Because there is an internet. We have some place to go. If this had happened 40 years ago, we would be far more isolated. And let's not take the internet for granted because that's a human construct as well. And there are ways that that could actually crash. And then we wouldn't be able to do this. I want to point out we'd still be just as whole. We'd still be just as beautiful. We'd still be just as powerful. We'd still be just as connected with each other, at least through the heart, at least through uh, our humanity. But the fact that we have this available and that it hasn't crashed yet, in spite of all of the migrating to it, is really something that I think we need to acknowledge is a, is a blessing and a real contribution to, <clears throat> in the end, our getting over, our getting past this time and being able to heal and recuperate and recover and learn from what we're experiencing on every level, from body to family to work to world and everything in between in ways that we will not be so vulnerable to this going forward because guess what? Pandemics have always happened. Plagues have always visited the world. And very often, you know, I mean, now at least we have some kind of understanding of it and we're all in some sense becoming epidemiologists and public health people simply by watching videos and watching news reports and reading the paper and so forth. And it's all can be part of our mindfulness practice so that we don't get so sucked into all of that stuff that we, again, fill our minds and get carried away with our thinking and our worst fears. And then there can't be present, say, for each other, for our family, for our children, for our colleagues, uh, for those less fortunate in the world. Uh, and basically for this world of ours that has so much potential to flower and flourish and uh, create an imaginable well-being if we can learn some of the lessons that are learnable from this kind of experience that <clears throat> is basically involving the entire world at this point in time. 